My name is Anna Spagnoli, and I'm very happy to present you the results of the work done at the University of Padova with my co-authors. It is increasingly manifest that the cybersecurity needs to address not only the technical components, but also the human components of a system in a truly socio-technical approach. Usually, human vulnerability is believed to result from some negligence in adopting security practices or from disclosing critical information. Also in popular culture, as well as in academic studies, attackers are skillful developers and criminals. However, a security vulnerability that is often overlooked is that common citizens who lack programming skills and do not belong to cyber criminal or rebellious communities might deliberately participate in an attack or support it. How is it possible that lay citizens legitimize a crime? One way to address this question is by outlining the personality profile of the potential attacker. The drawback of this approach, however, is that sporadic participation to attacks from lay citizens would not result from steady deviant rates. And also, any preventive policy involving profiling might collide with privacy protection rights and be then hardly feasible. Alternatively, lay citizens' legitimization of attacks can be attributed to the availability of opposite cultural premises to frame that behavior. The advantage of this argumentative approach is that it looks for preconditions of crime within the mainstream culture of lay citizens instead of assuming deviance and subcultures, and that what is profiled are cultural misbeliefs, not specific people. According to discursive ecology, culture offers a set of shared and accepted commonplaces, both in favor and against any given controversial behavior. Our goal is to present a method to address the argumentative space of cybercrime, a method that allows to identify the repertoire of premises that a given community applies to an attack. To describe this method, we applied it to a small case study, the object of analysis will be the arguments supporting or opposing a cyber attack. We involved university students of different disciplines and interviewed them on attacks that include the deliberate participation of lay people. We interviewed them on four cases of cyber attacks differing in their motives. Based on the literature and excluding the motives that did not fit our case study, we had in the attack for profit narrative, a student was the victim of ransomware and was offered a discount on the ransom if he infected other people by forwarding them the malware. In the attack for revenge narrative, we had the website of banks attacked because they stopped serving a website accused of copyright violation. In the attack for ideology narrative, the website of a nuclear power distribution company was attacked as a pro-environmental protest. Finally, in the attack for recreation narrative, some co-workers participated in a prank with some malware freezing the computer of a colleague. We took inspiration from real attacks, but avoided references to real places and names to prevent preformed opinions. The sample included 16 people, a size that is sufficient to achieve saturation for a study such as ours, as described in detail in the paper. The participants' age ranged from 21 to 29. All participants report using the internet daily, as expected and their education ranged from computer engineering to economics, law, pharmacy, political science, primary education, and psychology. The procedure involved a collection of some basic demographic data, such as age, degree course taken, and frequency of internet usage. Then, when narrative was read and then followed by the interview in which the participant was asked for their opinion about the attack described in narrative and the people involved in it, then the procedure was repeated until the participant read and expressed their position on all four narratives. The presentation order of the different narratives or cases was randomized across the sample to balance the effect of order and fatigue. The interviews were conducted face-to-face -face and were not possible via internet phone calls. They lasted about 40 minutes each. The audio was recorded and then transcribed. All participants signed an informed consent before starting the data collection. The process through which we analyzed the participants' transcribed answers to the interview was a reflexive thematic analysis aimed at generating meaning by interpreting the data. The themes in this case were the premises supporting the interviewee's position on cyber attacks. We were not interested in identifying which position prevailed in the sample, but in discovering the grounds on which such positions rested and were articulated. We used a combination of inductive and deductive analytic processes. We first singled out those portions of the answers in which the interviewee argued against or in favor of the cyber attack described. For example, they want to express their thoughts, so that's okay. We then identified the premise on which the expressed position rested. In the example above, the premise would be the right to express one's opinion. 
Once all tokens were annotated in this way, we grouped the premises by similarity, obtaining 18 categories. In the example in the slide, the category would be ideals. Subsequently, we started a deductive process to ascertain the saturation and intersubjectivity of the categories we obtained. Two authors, independently from each other, assigned each token in the interviews to one or more of the 18 categories and were instructed to advise about the need for adding new categories. Then they met to solve these agreements in their coding. The details of the agreement seeking process are in the paper. At the end of this process, we remained with 15 premises. Premises are conditions that, if applied to the controversial behavior, the cyber attack, can change the favorability with which that behavior is viewed. So, for example, pursuing personal profit, if found applicable to a cyber attack, would put the cyber attack in an unfavorable light. Instead, if the victim did not take the basic security measures to protect their data, then the attack would be seen more favorably. The purpose of this case study was to showcase the potential of a method and not to make any claims regarding the generalizability of the specific premises identified. However, we can connect the results to the literature and outline some practical implications for cybersecurity. Regarding the connection with the literature, several premises identified in our analysis are consistent with some general types of neutralization techniques. Neutralization techniques are techniques to legitimize an action that breaches some social norms. These techniques operate by denying the status of victim to the target of an antisocial behavior, by denying the responsibility of the actor, or the presence of injuries, or the priority of the breach norms compared with higher level norms. Studies such as ours identify which specific premise translate those general techniques into the concreteness of a given controversy. Regarding the practical implications for cybersecurity, the premises we found represent a weakness insofar as they can be used to construe the attack as legitimate and talk the users into supporting it. Exposing such premises and their persuasive power could then be included in security interventions targeting the human factors to increase risk awareness. Additional risks are connected to some specific premises. One of them is the legitimization based on the good intention of the attacker, which risks to become pervasive in the current context in which cybercrime itself is neutralized as just another job. Another risk resides in the confusion between moral and legal evaluation of a controversial behavior, such as a cyber attack. If a lay citizen is deliberating whether to join a cyber attack, she must be aware that moral justifications would not lessen the legal implications of the deed. In conclusion, we hope to have shown that an argumentative approach provides a perspective on cybercrime that can manage complexity and ambivalence, cutters for lay users' involvement, and sheds light on the resources on which such involvement can be based. Thank you so much for your attention.